Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to talk to you guys, I guess, about the fellowship, about missionary work. I, I'm, I don't know. I I had an interesting experience Sunday. Um, I The past month or so, I've been driving my brother to church in Grace City, which is about an hour and a half away. So I drive an hour to his house, pick him up, and take another half hour to go to Community of Christ. And it's really nice because they have a larger congregation, so I, I'm able to actually bring my kids to church. So I've been talking to many people there, and one of my questions is, you know, this is a really good church. It's a really good community. You guys have all kinds of stuff going on. H how do we grow this? How do we get it so that, you know, we don't have to drive so far to go to Community of Christ? Because I, I really love Community of Christ. I'd love to see them grow. I, I think that they are a very, very valuable and needed church within the Latter-day Saint movement. And this brother I was talking to last Sunday, I asked him, I said, you know, he said he lived locally. He told me that his, his children and grandchildren all live locally. And so I, I just asked him point blank, why aren't they coming to church here? He made it pretty clear they were going to some sort of church. Why, why weren't they going to the community of Christ? And he said something that really kind of had me rethink everything with the fellowship. He said, it's because if you want a community, community of Christ is great. But if you're looking for a church, they don't have a traditional pastor, so it's the same person preaching every Sunday. And that makes it harder for people who are looking to just go to church. That that hit me hard. Because for how many years now have I been trying to get people that help out with the fellowship? Say, hey, make videos. I don't want to just see me. Uh, write blog posts. Even we had a council of elders. You know, some people sometimes in the council would, would write a blog post or uh, make a video, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't even really once a month. It was really all just, you know, look at Dave. And, I'm, and I've said several times, I, I don't want this to be the 700 Club of Mormonism, you know. Uh, I, I don't want this to be the Dave Barrowman show. And yet, it all keeps coming back to, to that, really. And, and don't get me wrong. First off, I want to say I really, really appreciate the brothers and sisters that have made videos. Uh, Cynthia, she makes she's made videos for the past two conferences, and man, people love them. They keep asking for more. More Cynthia, please, is what they keep saying. Um, and then James, people love his videos. He was making them once a month for a while. Uh, Alan's made videos. Lots of people made videos. And, and I know one of the questions is, why isn't Christine making videos? Well, if you saw the... If you saw our, our interview on Gospel Tangents, it's pretty obvious. I mean, I've mentioned before that she is an introvert. She she made a couple of videos, but she is not comfortable. I, I mean, I'm an introvert too, but she's even more of one than I am, obviously. And she doesn't feel comfortable. I'm not going to push her into it. I'm, I don't really want to push anybody into it. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, we have an issue where I don't want to start a church. I know the Lord is calling this the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship. My understanding of that is it's because we're a church is in a body of Christ, a people that fellowships together as Christians, and it's an ecumenical movement. It's not a traditional church. And I know there are people who love saying, I belong to the Fellowship of Christ. I belong to the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship. There's hundreds of people that really like being able to say this. And the very thing that I do didn't want to create seems to be what has been created where I guess I'm kind of the pastor and we have other people that show up and talk and for me personally that's a little difficult because I don't know I really like to break in my churches have three different talks on Sundays and yeah I know people complain about you know the high councilman's long boring talks and oh we don't want kids getting up there but the reality is that you never knew what you were going to get you may have a Sunday that's a complete dud. You may have a Sunday that's amazing or anything in between. And and there were times when, you know, a 12-year-old, 13-year-old would get up and, and share their thoughts for about 10 minutes. And then they would turn around and sit down. And I'd be like, no, no, bring that kid back. That was edifying. That was amazing. I don't want to hear what these adults have to say. You know, let's hear for the mouths of the children. Um, but it, it, it just is what it is. That, that apparently is not what you guys want or are looking for. Uh, if you want physical locations, if you want an actual church, you've got to get with Alan. I'm focusing on the School of the Prophets. 
But at the same time, you don't really have to do that because you can do this in your house and watch these videos. So it isn't really a big deal. It's, it's, there's no, there's no pressure for any sort of commitment because the content is constantly being provided. And, and I'm not going to change that. So you don't have to worry about that. But then my question becomes, how do we grow as a movement? I put out this statement of inclusion. You know, um, I kind of feel like, I, I don't mean this in a negative way. I kind of feel like when people are, you know, they belong to a particular church and, and that church just doesn't like them. You know, they, they may be working around how, how do we, how do we keep these people, but, but we, we can't fix them. And so therefore we're going to figure out a way to like make this possible, but we really don't actually want them here. Well, those people, they don't like not being wanted. And rather than saying, well, since you don't want me, I'm going to leave. They are like, no, I'm going to stay and I'm going to make you love me. And so it's hard to build a fellowship for people who are spiritually homeless when they're refusing to leave the house that they've received the eviction order from. And then you have the people who they get that eviction order and they're like, no, I, I want to. You know, if you were a, a, a black man back in the day in the Brigham My Church and wanted to be ordained, well, you could go to Community of Christ or you could stay there and keep fighting. Today, you know, you can be a single and never get married, always be celibate, never have any kind of significant other LGBTQ person, or you can go to Community of Christ. And I've even heard that there's some problems there in the, with the LGBTQ community. And yeah, so people just took their fight from one group to the other. And so it's great that we put together this statement of inclusion, but at the end of the day, if, if no one knows about it, it doesn't matter. And if those, we're never going to be able to help the people that are trying to force themselves on others. And, and I don't mean that in a negative way. It just is what it is. We, we can't help the people who say, I know you don't want me, but I want to be here. So make space, make room. I support those people 120%. If you feel the Lord is calling you to a ministry where you stay in your church and you say, hey, God accepts everybody, you stay there. You know, if they kick you out, they kick you out. But you're doing the Lord's work in trying to improve the church that you're in. So please don't take this as a negative. Those that are looking for something different, those that aren't called to fight, they just want a safe space, a safe space how will they know that that safe space exists? If I'm making videos and I'm writing blog posts and I'm receiving revelations and no one is sharing them. So if you don't feel called to share a message, to write a blog post, to get involved in any way, to help Alan build the church, to help build the school, the prophets, that's that's fine. I, I mean, believe me, I want you here. I I want I want people to come and help because I I can't do this full time. I am not getting paid for this, and I've I've got bills to pay. And and again, I'm not trying to you know whine or complain. It's just how the world works. Time is a finite thing. Resources are finite, and and I'm not asking anybody to pay my mortgage. I, I would much rather someone came and just helped with the work, if that makes sense. So how can you help? What can you do? If, if we're going to be a movement where my somewhat coherent ramblings are, are what people want to see and what people want to hear, um, then we've got to let people know that we exist. Now, I'm going to tell you point blank, there's just only, there's only literally two ways to do this. And I've talked about this before. You either have to give us money so that we can spend money doing marketing. We recently, we recently um, purchased a year subscription for meetup.com. We're hoping to do some missionary work through that. It's more particularly for the School of the Prophets. But those dues will have to be renewed next year. Will we have the cash? That's up to you. Uh, I, I think I mentioned before, like I, I, I do put money into this, obviously. I put my time, talents into this. But at the end of the day, if you feel 
the Holy Spirit testifying to you that what we're doing is worthwhile, then you can help out financially or, and, or I should say, you can share the videos. And that statement of inclusion, it's, in my mind, it's, and Alan and Christine and I worked on very hard on that, um, putting that together prayerfully. It is everything missing from the proclamation of the families. And I'm going to tell you, the reason why it exists is because during Pride Month, I got down on my knees. I said, what do I do? We have these people that are literally putting up flags of saying, we don't like the gays. During Pride Month, they're putting out that proclamation of the family specifically to state in a polygamous church that still practices polygamy today, even if it's spiritual polygamy, that marriage is between one man and one woman. Well, that obviously isn't true because when I was a member of their church, I was sealed to two different women. So I, when I was a member and that came out, well, that came out before I, I married Christine, but I'm still sealed to my first wife and I'm sealed to Christine. So in their eyes, that that proclamation of the family, I'm in violation of it. And so are some of their apostles. Now, I, I don't say that to to disparage them. I'm just pointing out the fact that that statement that, that these people are hanging up on their lawns is an anti-Mormon statement that speaks out against their own leadership. People whose men whose names are on the document that they're putting on their lawns. And so I wanted something for the fellowship to be able to say, this is what the Lord says about that. Now, their church can say that all that they want. And, and I support their right, their freedom of speech to oppress others within their movement. And the reason why I can do that is because those people that are being oppressed, they can stay or they can go. They're, no one's forcing them to be there. And so if they want to oppress people in the movement and those people want to stay there and fight the oppression or be oppressed, that's their God-given right to do so. And I'm going to be very clear on that. But that's not what we're doing. So how do we let people know that there is a safe place for them? And that's what I'm trying to rethink now. I'm, I'm not charismatic. I get a lot of complaints about my videos, far more complaints about my videos, my blog articles, revelations, everything than I do anything positive. And, and I'm not, I'm not saying that to complain. I'm just saying like, there's gotta be somebody better that the Lord could have called to do this, but me, uh, I, I don't know why the Lord called me to do it. I, I tried to avoid doing it when he called me. And, and I, I still remember like, I, I actually tried to sidestep and do something that I felt was somewhat similar. And I didn't know exactly what my ministry was, but I knew the Lord had called me to one. I was like, what if I do this? And the Lord was like, yeah, no, that, that, is, that is not what I asked you to do. So I had to repent. And I finally had that moment where I know, you know I told, I've, I've told you guys this before. I told the Lord I wouldn't leave the Brighamite church unless I had the spirit of peace. I was not gonna leave in anger. And when that peace washed over me, I mean, that's, that's, why I, that's why I can't let this go. Because that love of God that washed over me that day, I, I want everyone to feel that love like I did. That acceptance, that knowledge that God is real and loves all of us more than human words could ever express how how do we get that message out there i believe that those people that are staying in their churches the lord's called them to a ministry and, and they're there to, to to i don't want to use the word fight but I'll, I'll say teach until they're excommunicated or the lord tells them to move on you know those people whatever church it is it's not just the breaking my church please don't think i'm picking on the breaking my there's people I've talked to people in multiple different Latter-day Saint churches that are, are fighting the good fight, if you will. How can we be a safe space for them to fall back on and say, I need a break for a minute. Let me talk to you guys so that I still remember that I'm loved. And then I'll pick myself back up and I will move forward in Christ, taking what I've learned here back 
back to my home church. Those people that don't feel called to fight, but they also don't feel called to leave the Latter-day Saint movement behind. How do we create a safe place for them, a safe space for them, so they can come here and rest? And maybe they'll find another church somewhere else. And if they don't, maybe they'll get with Alan and help build something here. But how, how do we do this? I'm, I'm not some expert at this stuff. I didn't serve a two-year mission for the LDS Church. I don't really know. I mean, I, I, I was a missionary. I was a warden stake missionary for like what feels like two decades. But that's really just going out on splits with missionaries and teaching gospel doctrine. And, of course, going to lots and lots of meetings. I learned a lot about how they wanted things to be. But I, I'm not, I'm a seed planter. I'm, I'm great at planting seeds. I'm not really great at, like, I don't know. I don't want to use the word converting people. Um, but I guess that is the right word. I don't know how to grow this. Yes, I did lobbying work on you know Washington D.C. and I I, I actually came up with a I'm, I'm going to brag a minute here and tell you I came up with a strategy that was executed that stopped a bill from passing for two and a half years. It was a bill that was supposed to pass in January of one year and it did not pass. It was it was guaranteed to pass, and and we worked hard for two and a half years. I had to make all kinds of concessions before it passed. But the thing is, I. Just, I mean, I'm a strategist. I was able to come up with a strategy, but I didn't do all of the work myself. And I didn't even, like, I can't say that I came up with the idea in a vacuum. We were in a group meeting. I came up with an idea, and then we had to figure out how to execute that idea. And we all participated. I'm, I'm nobody special. That's why we need a council of elders. So I, I don't have all of the answers. And I, and I want to be very clear on that. Yeah, I have revelation from the Lord. And what the Lord tells me is, gather the people. Come to me as a people. Build a temple. And so I can keep making these videos. And, and I will keep making these videos as, as, as best I can. I, I, I promise you. But my Thursday thought is, how do we stop being the best kept secret in the Latter-day Saint movement? How do we get to a point where people stop showing up saying, where have you been all this time? We need to be able to get this information out there so people know that they're not alone. And so my Thursday thought for you is, how do you, how do you do that? Now, I want to share something with you. I feel impressed by the Spirit to share something with you. But before I do, I, I want to clarify. Um, a brother donated some money so that I could order seven copies of this. This isn't a, a book that we're selling uh, on Amazon or on Lulu or anything. This is the missionary edition, if you will, of the Torah of Moses. And so we, we, have, we sell a paperback and we sell a hardback that has a cover. And this is somewhere in between. And the idea that this brother had was that we need to have something that we, that we could carry around that isn't get damaged. Like the, um, you know, obviously a hardback with a paper cover. That paper cover can get ripped and a paperback can get ripped up. And so he was willing to spend the money to purchase these. I have seven copies. I ordered seven copies. And as soon as I get down to two, I will order... Uh, five more to make sure that, you know, keep it around seven. So, uh, and just so you know, um, without taxes and shipping and handling, these books, this particular edition, the print cost that, you know, is the, the publisher, uh, $20 and I think 70 cents, we'll say 20, $21 per, per hardback copy. Uh, it's like 17, I think, for the paperback. So... <clears throat> So I have these books, and as the Spirit moves me to give them to people, you know, I, I do. And, but, but the thing I want to be clear about, the, the clarifying portion, if you will, is 
this book isn't here to convert people to the fellowship, right? I'm not going to take this and knock on someone's door and be like, hey, I want you to come and read this and pray on it and come and join my church. That that's not that's not the point of this. I don't know why I keep putting it down. I might as well just hang on to it. Here it is. So I was at my neighbor's house. And if you grew up in any Latter day Saints, evangelical and Latter day Saint church, you know, it's you're really pushed hard to share the gospel with, with everybody, especially your neighbors. And I can tell you that I started at a very young age. I grew up in Grove City. Uh, well, I didn't grow up. I, I was there until the fourth grade. And as a little kid, I remember knocking on my neighbor's doors to give them pamphlets. Because back in the 70s, there was this thing on the wall that was full of pamphlets we could give their neighbors. Um, on special Sundays, when we were giving Book of Mormons to give their neighbors, we gave them Book of Mormons. And they were so kind. They took them. And they, they, they very kindly took them and then came back to uh, my house later on to give all that stuff back to our parents. And I know that growing up, when we moved to the country, there were some people that were not very kind about the fact that we were Latter-day Saints. And if I tried to give someone a Book of Mormon, it caused a lot of problems. So the idea of just sharing scriptures with your neighbors, it, it can be a tad bit controversial. I, I understand that. First hand. So I was talking to my neighbor, and the Holy Spirit whispered to me, saying, give them a copy of the Torah of Moses. And I thought to myself, no, <laughs> uh, I, I don't feel comfortable with this at all, Spirit. Like, is this really you, God? Because uh, this isn't something that, that I feel comfortable doing. Um, and it was definitely God. And I knew that it was God. And I did the thing that I sometimes do where I just said to myself, well, maybe I'm supposed to talk to them and eventually give them one. And the Lord said, go to your van, get the copy that's in your van, and bring it over and give it to them. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I do not want to do this. Introvert Dave. It's hard enough for me just to talk to these people in the first place. But eventually, I, I was obedient to the Lord. And I said, hey, I, I have a book in my car. Um, I, I, I'd like to give it to you if you, if you would be interested in reading it. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, we love to read. Yeah, go get the book. So I went, I grabbed the copy, and I handed it to them. And I, and I kind of explained a little bit about what it was and where it came from. And they're like, oh, okay, well, that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, we'll, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely read this. And I could tell that they were a little weirded out, but they were also very curious. And that was a Saturday. No, maybe it was a Friday. It was a Friday or Saturday. Well, a couple days later, whatever day, whatever day it was, I don't know. A couple days later, I was at the bus stop and I went to talk to uh, the one lady. And she told me, she's like, hey, about that book. I was like, yes. <laughs> and she said, I, we, we not I, we read the first three chapters. I was like, oh, cool, cool. So how'd it go? What'd you think? And she said, and I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Um, but she said, when we read these three chapters, we recognize it's scripture and it's, it's the Bible. But it's written in a way that really spoke to us. It Just in the first three chapters was talking about the things that we believe. And... She was very grateful that that I had shared this with her. Now, I'm not telling you that because I want you to go and buy copies of this book and give it to people. This is the book that I felt impressed to give to this person at this time. There was another time when I felt impressed to give doctrines and theologies of the Church of Jesus Christ to someone. There was another time when I felt impressed to give a copy of the Community of Christ version of the Book of Mormon. There was another time when I felt impressed to give a copy of the Brighamite version of the Book of Mormon. And so on and so forth. Uh, other scriptures. There's uh, the, the brother who actually um, don donated the money to the missionary fund so we could buy these books. Said that he felt impressed to give a copy of another book from another part of the Latter-day Saint movement to a relative of his. And I said, oh, is that something your relative is interested in? And he said, 
no, not not really. But I felt moved by the spirit to do it, so I did it. So I'm not sharing the story with you because I want you to, like I said, I don't want you to have to go out and buy a bunch of these books and give them out to people, but I want you to learn to listen to and follow the spirit because that's how the missionary work gets done. What is it that the Lord is asking you to share? It won't be the same thing every time. Now, I, I know that this is a book I'm going to share a lot because the Lord asked me to translate it. So it just kind of makes sense. There's there's times, obviously, like I said, we'll share other books, but this is this is probably going to be one of the main books the Lord has me share. What is it? Is there a video that the Lord's asking you to share? Is, is it the Statement of Inclusion video? Is it the, the Together in Sisterhood? We, we ordain lots of women who don't join the fellowship. But the Brighamite Church, they don't ordain women. And these sisters need someone to ordain them that's not going to tie them to something. So is there a sister that, that has told you, I don't know what to do. I feel called to a ministry. And, and, I, and I'm lost. I don't know how to be ordained for that ministry. Share the sisterhood video. Share the revelation that Christine had. Doctrines of Christ. You're talking to someone who feels that, these are what I call the creative videos, by the way. Someone who's like, you know, why is God so complicated? God isn't complicated. Here, learn the doctrine of Christ. It's so simple. We talk a lot in the fellowship about moving from the church to the kingdom. It's not about everybody joining one true church. About It's about all of us gathering together as saints, regardless of what church we belong to, and being a kingdom of God. We have a video on that. You want to know about Mormonism? We have the first four articles of faith. You want to know about the fellowship? We have an about the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian fellowship. You want to know about Mormon Kabbalah? We have the statement of fundamental truth, the seven principles of Mormon Kabbalah, and, and I'm sure I'll be making more. They're quick videos all of them are around three minutes or less there are blog posts that you can share on social media if you're talking to somebody one of the things i like to do is i will share something and i will share a link to an article under it that that somehow corresponds or a video to, to go along with that every time linking him back to the website and then that way it isn't just your opinion it isn't just my opinion we're backing it up with a movement with the momentum of an entire movement behind it. So, brothers and sisters, back to my Thursday thought. I think I can finally set this down now. My Thursday thought is this. This is what I want you to ponder and think about. How can you share the gospel of Jesus Christ? How can you share the message of unity? Come and learn more about Mormon Kabbalah. Come and learn more about the Fellowship of Christ. We're not going to ask you to join anything. If it's something that speaks to you, we are going to ask that you share it with others so it can speak to them as well. The Lord has told me that there are people coming. He told me that the Council of Elders will be set up. It was. And now he's told me that more people are coming so that we can rebuild this fellowship. So we can build it correctly. The way that he asked it, I, I can tell you point blank, the Lord ought to rebuke me. I know the reason why it failed the first time was because he told us how to build it and we didn't listen. We're supposed to focus on a council of 50 and the school of the prophets. And then from out of there will come the people that will be the council of elders. We didn't do that. And now we've repented and we're moving forward in Christ. So I would ask that you pray to the Lord and ask him, how do I, you, let people know that this exists? How do I help people deepen their relationship with Jesus Christ? How do I use all these resources that have been created to further the gospel, to unite the saints, to let the spiritually homeless know that they're not alone? And those that are called to build, ask the Lord, how do I work with Alan to build this, this church, this non-denominational church, to move the saints forward and create a home for the spiritually homeless and not just a way station? This isn't something that I can do. This is something that we can do together in Christ. 
And I, I know that it's possible. And I know the Lord wants it done. And I know the Lord has called you because I've been talking for about a half an hour now and you're still listening. So that's my Thursday thought. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.